Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our first official church online. I mean, if you're joining us this morning, then make yourself known on the live chat. Send your comments through and your encouragements through. I think you can put your prayer requests on there as well. Um, we're trying this out. I'd love to know how it is going to work for us all. So um, do pass your comments on. Um, we may be separated as a church family right now, but we can still be connected, right? So let's make the most of this technology that we've got. And uh, let's make the most of the communication tools at our disposal. And we're going to get through this. And we'll be back here before we know it. Um, if you need support or if you need prayer, if you need some um, practical help, then please, please let me reiterate, the church has not stopped. We are still here. If you call the church office, if you leave a message, uh, then someone will call you back and will get you the, the support that you need. And you can email us. You can leave us a message on our Facebook page, whatever is going to work for you. So in the words of last week, God is with you. He is. He will not fail you. He will not abandon you. So take heart. So we're going to start our service this morning with some worship. So please, wherever you are, join in. Fresh like 
Well, welcome back. Uh, what I forgot to say was happy Mothering Sunday, by the way, all you mums out there. I'm sorry you're not here. I'm sorry we're not giving you flowers and chocolates this morning, but I'm sure wherever you are, somebody is um, going to be looking after you and giving you a good day. Um, well, over the last couple of weeks, we've been revisiting the story of Joseph in the book of Genesis, and we've been thinking about what it means when, like him, we find ourselves in situations that we weren't expecting. And I have to admit, I am not where I expected us to be, even this time last week. But we, we can still relentlessly trust God. But will we? Will we? That's what this series has been about. That's where faith is meant to kick in. This is when it matters the most. This is when it can flourish like never before. So we've already been looking at trusting in God's promise, the hope that we carry. We've been trusting in God's proximity, his close presence with us. And today, we're going to be thinking about what it means to trust in God's provision. It's easy at a time like this to get fearful, not just from a health point of view, uh, but in terms of will I still be able to get everything that I think that I need? I mean, that's what has instigated this, this wave of panic buying. Never mind anyone else. I'm going to get what I want before I think I can't get it anymore. But God has not called us to be selfish or fearful quite the opposite. He has called us to be faithful. Listen to these words from 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity or cowardice or fear, but he has given us a spirit of power and of love and of sound judgment and personal discipline. Abilities, listen to this, that result in a calm, well-balanced mind and self-control. I mean, Joseph in Genesis, he, he fits that description so brilliantly. I mean, his physical and his mental health were, were both under threat, but he was filled with the Spirit of God. More than ever right now, we need calm, well-balanced minds and self-control, filled with the Spirit of power and of love. I mean, there will be people right now, watching us to see whether trusting in Jesus is worth it. Relying on our faith to hold strong and for our care to be real and enduring. I mean, that's what God's presence will give us as we relentlessly trust him. And remember Psalm 23 from last week. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. There is no need to panic when you know that he is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides. And I can trust that he will give me everything that I need in any circumstance that I find myself in. Now, it might not be everything I want, <laughs> but that's not a reason to stop trusting God. I've got some encouraging chunks of scripture for you today as we look at trusting in God's provision. And here's what St. Paul says in Philippians 4 verses 11 to 13. He said, I've learned to be content and self-sufficient through Christ, satisfied to the point where I am not disturbed or uneasy regardless of my circumstances. I mean, wow, not disturbed, not uneasy, no matter what circumstances I face. I know how to get along and live humbly in difficult times. And I also know how to enjoy abundance and live in prosperity. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing life. Whether well-fed or going hungry, whether having an abundance or being in need, I can do all things which he has called me to do through him who strengthens and empowers me to fulfill his purposes. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I am ready for anything. 
and equal for anything through him who infuses me with inner strength and confident peace. Is that what you need? This is the word of the Lord. Do you see that there is so much that God provides for us above and beyond just getting our basic needs met? Understandably, that is where we, that's where we start. And in this, this current climate that we're in, there are some real worries about whether we can pay our rent or mortgage, whether we're going to have enough pasta or toilet roll. But Jesus was clear that we can trust him with the details of our lives. And we don't need to get distracted or consumed by those things. He'll take care of them as we look to him. He said, it's the words of Jesus. So don't worry about these things saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of, of unbelievers, but your heavenly father already knows all your needs. He, he's saying, you can expect those who don't have any trust in God to be panic buying and worrying, but come on, if you have a relationship with Father God, if you know his presence and his promise, then there is a, a freedom to respond differently. Jesus went on, seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Ain't that the truth? So when it comes to trusting in God's provision as a follower of Jesus, this is our starting place. Philippians 4.19 And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. If we stop getting consumed with what we think we haven't got and instead set our minds on doing the right thing and being on God's agenda, then we can be sure that our basic needs will be met. Now, I'm not saying just sit back and expect God to just bring everything to you. There is always a partnership. There's always a cooperation. But I'm saying get up, keep moving, work with him, trust him. And then what we'll begin to see are the, the other things that he will provide. Now, we've been looking at Joseph as an example of how to respond in the face of unexpected circumstances. And I've been asking myself, how did he stay so calm and secure and, and focused? What was it that God provided for him when he found himself powerless and confined? Now, we don't hear about what he ate or what he drank, but we know that despite being a slave and despite being in prison for, for 10 years, he survived. He, he, was, he was provided with the things he needed to keep him alive and well. But more than that, more than that, there was something about him that caused others around him to trust him. And I believe it was the same thing that Paul was speaking about in Philippians. Peace of mind and heart. Satisfied to the point where I am not disturbed or uneasy regardless of my circumstances. Like Paul, we don't see Joseph panicking or, or freaking out. We, we, don't, we don't see him complaining or moaning. We don't see him blaming anybody. We see him Relentlessly trusting in God. Now, I don't know what you are hoping that God is going to provide for you during these next few weeks or months, but God's peace is right up there for me. 
How about you? Jesus never promised that life would be easy. But he said that he would be with us and that he would provide a helper for us. This is what he encouraged his disciples with. You can read this in in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, 25 to 27. He said, I have told you these things while I am still with you. But the, the helper, comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, standby, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place to, to represent me and act on my behalf. He will teach you all things. And he will help you remember everything that I have told you. Peace I leave with you. My perfect peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled. Nor let it be afraid. Let my perfect peace calm you in every circumstance. And give you courage and strength for every challenge. The words of Jesus. This is exactly what God provided Joseph with to keep him on track. And to keep him faithful so that he would then be able to respond to the next thing that God provides. In abundance, no matter the circumstance. And that is opportunity. He provides opportunity. I mean, where you are right now might not be where you expect it to be. Might not be where you want to be. But I can guarantee that if you'll trust him, you will find that God is providing you with opportunities too. You know, back to Genesis. And we're in chapter 39, starting at verse 21. And it says, but the Lord was with Joseph in the prison and showed him his faithful love. And the Lord made Joseph a favorite with the prison warden. And before long, the warden put Joseph in charge of all the other prisoners and over everything that happened in the prison. The warden had no more worries because Joseph took care of everything. The Lord was with him and caused everything he did to succeed. You know, Joseph could have just holed himself up in his cell. I mean, due to the injustice and the unfairness of the situation, he could have just looked after his own interests. But what we see is that he saw and he took the opportunities that were given him to serve and to care and to look after the other prisoners. And I want us to think about where we are right now. I mean, some of us are self-isolating. Some of us are are well, but we're restricted in where we can go and where we can't go. But we are in an age where we can connect by phone, online. Even while the world is going crazy around us, let's not not just look after our own interests. But let's look for for the opportunities that are being provided right now to encourage those that we know. And to take care of those who are more vulnerable. Listen a few verses about opportunity in the New Testament. Galatians 5, sorry, Galatians 6, verse 10. Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially to those in the family of faith. Ephesians 5, 6. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Colossians 4, 5, live wisely among those who are not believers and make the most of every opportunity. James 1, 2, dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. I mean, Joseph made himself available and he took the opportunities that God provided for him, trusting that God would put him in the right place at the right time. You know, one such occasion that we read about was when two of Pharaoh's staff, his chief cupbearer and his chief baker, were were sent to prison and they were assigned to Joseph to take care of them. And both of them had a dream. And it was a dream that troubled them. 
And Joseph, we read that he noticed and he took the time to ask them, why do you look so worried today? You can read this in Genesis 40. You know, when you are not consumed with your own stuff, you are much more able to notice other people and take care of other people. And notice the change in Joseph from the the bragging 17-year-old telling his brothers about his dreams and what they meant to trusting in the provision of God's wisdom. Interpreting dreams is God's business, Joseph replied. But go ahead and tell me your dreams. And of course, Joseph was able to interpret the dreams. I mean, don't you find it encouraging that that God takes Joseph and uses him to provide their help for somebody else. He'll do the same through us too, if we'll let him. He can use us to be the provision for someone else's needs. I mean, think about that for a moment. Well, it was good news for the cupbearer in the story, not such good news for the baker. I mean, in that moment, Joseph appealed to the cupbearer to remember him to Pharaoh. But in yet another setback for Joseph in this tragic story that goes from bad to worse, when the cupbearer got released, we read that he forgot all about Joseph and didn't give him another thought. But let's not lose hope when things don't happen to our time scale. God knows what he is doing. He knows where he needs us to be. And for poor, poor Joseph, it took another two years until Pharaoh himself had a disturbing dream. And the cupbearer suddenly remembered the Hebrew slave who could interpret dreams. And I I love that Joseph just kept being faithful. He kept just serving where he was and where he could. And he just kept relentlessly trusting in God. Here's what he said to Pharaoh when he was finally summoned to interpret those dreams. He said, it is beyond my power to do this. But God can tell you what it means and set you at ease. Now that's confident trust. He didn't doubt that God would provide wisdom. He didn't doubt that God would would bring clarity and peace. He didn't doubt that God was going to use him. He always trusted that God had a plan. He always trusted that God's purposes would come to pass. And the interpretation of that dream, that was about seven fat cows and seven skinny cows, seven fat heads of grain and seven shriveled heads of grain. The interpretation was that God was warning Pharaoh ahead of time that there would be seven years of plenty coming, seven years of abundance. But this would be followed by seven years of severe famine. This warning would give Pharaoh time to prepare, to store up, to be ready for the famine that would ravage the land. Now, now I don't know why there were seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. You know, that question is, is never even asked. There is an acceptance that events do play out on planet Earth. But God calls people to attention. He calls us to look to him for guidance. He calls us to work with him. And as we do, he provides such opportunities for for Joseph that he didn't shrink back from. And those opportunities turned into responsibilities. You know, as we go on in the story, when, when Joseph is finally living it up in a palace of his own, governor of the whole of Egypt, second in command to Pharaoh himself, with his own servants and a new family. I mean, the famine hits just as he said it would. And his brothers, 
came to Egypt seeking food. And after 22 years, they don't recognize Joseph. He recognizes them. I mean, this is his chance for revenge. Uh, And yes, he does play with them for a bit. Go and read it in Genesis. He wants to see whether they have changed. But eventually, he takes the opportunity that God provided for him to show grace, to show forgiveness. He takes the opportunity for reconciliation and restoration. I mean, let me read it to you. This is, this is so powerful. Joseph could stand it no longer. There were many people in the room, and he said to his attendants, Out, all of you! So he was alone with his brothers when he told them who he was. Then he broke down and wept. He wept so loudly the Egyptians could hear him, and word of it quickly carried to Pharaoh's palace. I am Joseph, he said to his brothers. Is my father still alive? But his brothers were speechless. They were stunned to realize that Joseph was standing there right in front of them. Please come closer, he said to them. So they came closer and he said again, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into slavery in Egypt. But don't be upset. Don't be angry with yourselves for for selling me to this place. It was God who sent me. It was God who sent me here ahead of you to preserve your lives. The famine that has ravaged the land for two years will last five more years. And there will be neither plowing nor harvesting. God has sent me ahead of you to keep you and your families alive and to preserve many survivors. So it was God who sent me here, not you. That's the perspective that relentless trust can give you. God, I know you are good. I know you have a plan. And even though I may not like this situation or understand why I am here, I trust that you will provide for me what I need, that you will give me your peace, and that even here you are providing opportunities for me to do good and to see good, to show love, to show grace, to show care, to forgive, to be your provision to someone else. Amen? Everything I go through, And everything I encounter provides me with an opportunity to put my faith into practice. To be like Jesus, the one and only favored son of God. The one sent ahead of us to suffer on our behalf that we might be saved. We get to be part of his salvation story that started in Genesis and is is still being worked out on the earth today. You know, I can only keep encouraging you and myself to keep trusting, to get filled and to stay filled with the Spirit of God and to be alert to the opportunities that God is providing for us even today. But before I pray for us, Just watch this testimony of somebody in our church who did not find themselves in the place they expected to be, but who has trusted God all the same. This is Carol's story. Well, thanks, Carol, for coming and giving a testimony today. And I just wonder if you'd like to tell everyone just a little bit of your background and your career that you used to have. Yeah, so um, before I became ill, I was um, a learning disability nurse. For a lot of years, 18 years, um, I started straight from school and I 
uh, worked my way through and ended up uh, managing residential homes for people with learning disabilities. Uh, they also had mental health problems and um, challenging behaviour. Uh, I never thought when I was get, uh, giving care that I would end up uh, being the receiver of care in the future. So what's your current situation now? So um, I've been ill now for eight years. My, I've got an autoimmune disorder called sarcoidosis. Um, and I've got that in my brain and in my lungs and in my kidneys. So it causes scarring on your major organs. So it's caused lesions in my brain, a bit similar to MS which has um, affected my balance um, and several other things. And it's caused uh, fibrosis, which is scarring in my lungs uh, and also in my kidneys. Uh, the way I've been treated for this is a lot of steroids and a lot of immunosuppressants, which is why I get so many yeah. Yeah. bad infections. OK, thank you for that. And how, in this current situation you now find yourself, has God provided for you? Um, in so many ways. I was always very career-minded. Um, I sort of worked my way up. I was the youngest ever registered manager um, of a care home in Berkshire, and I was always very sort of like um, wanting to um, have my career, and it meant a lot to me. So being ill and being at home and being on benefits was a real shock at first, but it has changed my life in so many ways, good ways too. Um, for instance, um, sorry, my brain's gone blank. Um, in so many good ways, it's changed my life because before I was always on the rat race of working and uh, not seeing the family that much, and the years just went by. Whereas I feel like since I've been ill, um, things have slowed down, um, my connections with people are better, I have more time with my family. So there's many positives in that as well. Um, I have five children. I'm, I'm a single mum, um, so things can get really busy. Um, but yeah, that's that's what's different now. So, how have you found not being able to earn your own income? Um, that was really difficult at first. I've never claimed anything um, benefits-wise, and when I first went on to benefits, the stigma of that and not being able to have my own home, you know, being in social housing, um, was a lot to take on. Um, but I had to just put my trust in God, and which I have done, and you know, it's it's just been amazing. The ma the miracles I have seen never cease to amaze me. They really do. They happen all the time. I am truly blessed in so many ways. So, how did things change when you took that step to trust God in terms of your giving? So, I found it really challenging tithing at first because of being on benefits and struggling to make ends meet a lot of the time. And I really thought, how on earth am I going to give any money? Because I don't have it to give. But um, after hearing um, James talk in the verse Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, which um, basically says, um, tithe, and if you tithe with obedience, um, you'll, be blessed with, you'll be blessed back and you'll be blessed with more. So I thought, right, I'll just do it. So that's I started off um, paying a standing order each month. Um, which I've done and been every month it, I've never felt where I, I've never got to the stage where I've thought I'm not going to pay and then recently um, I was challenged again um, James talked about um, Kingfisher family and about tithing to, to them and how much funds were needed so again went through the sort of like can I do this should I do this and then of course remembering like well no just do it and test it and see if it works so I set up a standing order, worried about it, but thought, just go with it. Um, and then the weekend after that I'd set up the, the standing order, I suddenly, one of the amounts that I get that go in my account each month, suddenly went up by double the amount that I'd put on my standing order. And it was just so shocking. And even though I know that, it, that he's tested, I've tested it out so many times and it's always, he's always given back, I'm still shocked when it happens. And if that wasn't enough, also that weekend, um, I'd, been, I'd been in London with Libby and we'd walked past two men and it was a really cold, rainy, it was late at night, it was cold and rainy, and two men that were selling the big issue and, and sleeping in a doorstep. And we walked past, as I usually do, try not to give eye contact do the typical English thing 
um, got past and I just said to Libby, I've got to go back at this. God's just telling me I've just got to go and help them. So I went back and gave them some money and they were so grateful and so lovely. Um, again, it was like what was left in my purse. And I really thought I shouldn't have really given it because I didn't know, you know, I didn't really have that much in my purse anyway. Um, but then the next day uh, came into another sudden amount that I was not expecting at all. And it was the next day. It, it's just uncanny how it always happens. Um, but it just gives me such a glow. Um, there's no other thing that I've tested God in that is is so quick for response and other things that you pray and you have to wait. But this is just so quick. So yeah, that was that was my um, that was my moment. <laughs> Amazing. So just lastly. What opportunities has God provided in the situation that you found yourself in? Um, one of the main things was I always ha had my sort of career and my life planned out. I thought I knew what was going to happen and I was going to be this career person. And I was going to uh, carry on with that. And when that didn't ha when, when that all changed, I, I found it difficult to adapt. But what I did find is that when I was in hospital at first and all the time since, I feel it many times that God's put me there for a reason. I've been with people that have been dying and I've talked through the night with them on their last night. Um, I've talked to um, people that have gone away from faith that, are, that, that but now are coming more back to faith. So many different times and not even just about that, just been with older people and being chatting to them and being able to help them a little bit. So, um, yeah, I was once given, a, a, again, by somebody... Um, a verse that said, um, trust, in you, trust in the Lord, Lord with all your heart and don't depend on your own understanding, which is Proverbs 3, verse 5. And um, I truly believe in that too. I, you know, I didn't, this isn't the path I chose, but I know he's put me here for a reason and that's proved time and time again. That's amazing. Thank you. Well, let's pray, everybody. And Father, we find ourselves right now in an, in an unexpected place that we did not think we would be in. Lord, we find ourselves separated from loved ones. Lord, some of us are, are, are feeling isolated as we're all encouraged to, to distance ourselves socially from each other. But Lord, I thank you that you are with me. I thank you that you're not going anywhere. I thank you that your, your presence is with me now. And Lord, I thank you that even in these circumstances, you are able to provide me with everything that I need. And so I state that I trust in you, Lord. And I am holding on to you. And Lord, help me not to be so fearful of the things that I, I think might affect me that I miss out on the opportunities and the peace that you want to provide for me. Help me to be alert to your your presence, alert to your word, alert to your voice. And Lord, as I trust you, may I see the opportunities which are there for me. And Lord, as I stand firm in your peace, Lord, would you use me to, to be your provision to somebody else, even today. Lord, to reach out over the phone, to reach out over social media, Lord, that all those people that I know, that I have influence on, would know your care and your protection too. Lord, thank you for your promise. Thank you for your proximity. Thank you for your provision. Lord, may your name be lifted high. May many come to know you during this time and I pray it in Jesus name Amen and if you're watching online maybe you've never joined us here at Kingfisher before maybe you're looking in and you're, you're exploring faith because everything you know that you've trusted in just suddenly seems so, so shaky so temporary and you're looking for answers 
Well, I want to introduce you to Jesus today. He is your savior too. And he's literally there with you now. And you just need to open your heart, open your mind, and say, Lord Jesus, though I might not know you, I want to just ask you to come into my life. Lord, thank you that you went through suffering for me. Thank you that you died on a cross for me, that my sin would be forgiven, that I might go free, that I might be reconciled and restored to an amazing relationship with God. And so I ask you, Jesus, to come in, to wash me clean, to set me free, that I might know that I'm not alone. And I choose to get to know you and to live for you. Thank you that you rose again, that not even death, nothing need hold any fear for me anymore. Amen. It's a prayer of faith, but it's a prayer that will literally change your life and you can know Jesus for yourself. Join us here tonight, six o'clock. And we'll be back next week too. Take care, everyone. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. I may see suffering and not see why. Even so, God is good all the time I may see suffering and not see why even so God is good all the time in the maze and the mess God is stronger in his grace my dead end is a comma but God is good said he would my god will always be true to his word his name is great he's mighty over all of this i may see trouble but god sees me through i may see trouble but god sees me through was down and down but God has raised me up I know I'll falter yet but God has overcome I once was down and down but God has raised me up I know I'll falter yet but God has overcome I once was down and out but God has raised me up I know I'll falter yet, but God has overcome. I once was down and out, but God has raised me up. I know I'll falter yet, but God has overcome. But God has overcome it all. Oh. said he would my god will
So's the 